What's up guys and welcome to Xbox Ready, the YouTube channel that is all about Xbox. While the Xbox community seems to be kind of going through it right now due to some recent rumors going around, people are dropping Xbox, people are selling their Xboxes, burning them, throwing them in the trash. Not me though, I am here with another video to make sure that you are Xbox ready. Today we're going to be talking about the FTC and how they're trying to wrench away Activision Blizzard from Xbox and Microsoft once again. After that, we'll move on to the exciting new titles coming to Game Pass in February, as well as one that's mysteriously missing. And then I'll end the show talking about my experience at the Halo Season 2 premiere out in LA, and some thoughts I have about the direction of the show. And remember, if you want to stay Xbox ready, make sure you subscribe to the channel and set your notifications to be alerted to whenever I post a video. Let's discuss. So all the way back in January of 2022, perhaps you remember this, Microsoft announced its intentions to acquire one of the biggest publishers in the game, Activision Blizzard King. You probably remember what happened next, or what didn't happen, because pretty much nothing happened for the next two years until they finally closed the deal and October 2023. And if you're Microsoft, I imagine that you are pretty dang pleased, considering that Activision Blizzard ended up accounting for like a 60% growth in revenue in the content and services division. Despite all the drama and all the drawn out legal battles, I'm pretty sure Microsoft's sitting there like, yeah, this is worth it. But despite the massive bump in revenue that Activision Blizzard provided Microsoft this past financial quarter, they still ended up laying off over 1,900 employees. Because of that, the FTC over here in the United States is saying that Microsoft went back on their word, and they're in the process of trying to once again stop the merger, or at least put a pause on it while they can investigate. Microsoft said that the layoffs were because there was a lot of redundant positions, and they have since responded to the FTC's claims, saying that Activision was already planning on eliminating a significant number of jobs while still operating as an independent company. They also said that the FTC has failed to raise a serious case that would prove that Microsoft is indeed planning on using this acquisition to foreclose on console subscription and cloud gaming markets. Then they go on to basically flex on the FTC and no, I'm not kidding. They're like, man, these dudes, they lost in the ninth court of appeals and in the district courts, they're losers. They also say that the FTC is blatantly ignoring how much this deal has changed, considering that they had to offer a bunch of concessions in order to get this deal over the line over the United Kingdom. They end this letter saying, okay, guys, okay, if we really got to give up Activision Blizzard, divest the company, then we will still be able to operate pretty well as a company. We'll still be able to meet our goals, but we think that's unlikely to happen. Now, I really don't think that the FTC can really affect any sort of change here. As Microsoft has already mentioned, they have tried a couple of times already, and they weren't able to get it done the first round. They weren't able to get it done in the appeals court. And it's really like, I don't see a way how they would be able to untangle Activision Blizzard from Xbox and Microsoft now that the deal has gone through and the integration has already started to happen. Breaking up a company after they're already starting to merge, that almost never happens. And I also think that the FTC needs to take a step back and look at what's going on in the industry as a whole, i.e. mass layoffs firings. Thousands of jobs are not only being cut from Microsoft's gaming division, but also from places like Amazon Gaming, Unity, Twitch, Discord, the Embracer Group Studios. Volition was just shut down entirely. Bungie's going through the same thing, and you could probably name like five, six, seven, ten more studios that are going through the same thing. Wired recently put up an article on their website talking about surveys that were conducted at GDC. That was back in October, and according to the surveys, Somewhere up to like 35% of developers that were interviewed and took part in the survey said that they were either laid off or they knew someone in the business that was laid off. Don't get me wrong though, this still sucks and this does not excuse Microsoft laying off all of those people. Especially when like practically in the same breath they were like, look at how much money we're making, man we're killing it, this is awesome and oh yeah right, we gotta let you go, sorry, we're firing you, hope you land on your feed, no hard feelings, right? And speaking of, if any issues do arise from the FTC's new investigation into the Activision Blizzard deal, you better believe that Microsoft is going to do everything that they can to keep control of Activision Blizzard. As I mentioned earlier, it provided a massive boost in their quarterly revenue. And I'm starting to think, okay, could this rumored Xbox multi-platform strategy
strategy that we're hearing so much about have something to do with retaining Activision Blizzard and staying on the FTC and other regulators' good sides. This was actually something that was brought up to me at the Halo Season 2 premiere. I was talking to this guy, Shane Gillis. He was really cool. He watches the channel. And he's the one that brought it up to me. He's the one that floated the idea. And it got me thinking. I was like, man, maybe he's on to something. Activision Blizzard King is by far Xbox's golden goose. And if the choice ultimately became, okay, you can either have that Call of Duty money or you can get rid of Xbox exclusives entirely, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know which one they're going to pick in that situation. Ultimately, it's going to be a money move, which might end up stinging for Xbox fans. Meanwhile, these companies, especially Microsoft and Xbox, they're probably just looking at data and then going off of that. Other industry folks either seem to be supportive or indifferent to Xbox going multi-platform. God of War director David Yaffe was agreeing with this post on Twitter that said, if Xbox said next week that some of its games will be coming to rival platforms at full price, but the Xbox platform will get 6 to 12 months exclusivity, day one game pass on those games. Would that be an acceptable announcement? And he responds, 100%. Not only is it acceptable, but it is desirable. Game pass and subservices in general, if they succeed, get a big win. Everyone eventually gets the games, and Xbox makes more money to hopefully hire good product development managers. CEO of Ubisoft also threw in his two cents about the matter, saying that he doesn't expect it to really have an effect on the market, at least not in the way that fans are expecting. My gut is telling me that the FTC, they're not going to be able to take away Activision Blizzard from Microsoft. Not at this point. That ship has kind of sailed. They missed their chance. If they were going to actually do anything, well, the first time around was probably their best bet. Also, it's looking more likely that whatever they have to announce next week at this ominous business event that Phil Spencer has been talking about seems to be that it's going to be a mix of certain things. Like, yes, they're still going to have consoles, but they're also shipping out their exclusive to other platforms. But like David Yaffe is saying, Xbox owners are going to get first crack at them and they're going to get a day one on Game Pass. I think that's where it's heading. I don't know. It seems the most logical, the most reasonable to me. But that's also a huge benefit on Game Pass. And while I love Game Pass, I think it's awesome, and we'll talk more about that later. The way that subscription services are going in general, specifically for film and television, it's not inspiring a lot of confidence. And honestly, guys, I'm kind of having this come to Jesus paradigm shift moment because a couple of weeks ago, I was just talking about after Developer Direct how excited I was for games like Hellblade 2 and Avowed and Indiana Jones and I don't know why that has to change knowing that they're going to come to PlayStation a year or two later. Like, why do I actually care if they're put on PlayStation 5, whether it's a year from now or five years from now? Why do I need some sort of ownership, some sort of entitlement over these titles and these games that are coming out? Why do people need that validation of like, oh yes, I made the right choice and this plastic box that I put all of my time and money into to is the superior plastic box. I don't know, maybe it's time to do some soul searching, guys. Let's switch it up a little bit. Let's talk about all the titles that are coming our way to Game Pass in the month of February. A total of eight games are set to make their way over to the service between February 6th and the 20th, including Anuchard, or Anucard, uh, man, I, I might have just totally messed up that pronunciation. Train Sim World 4, Madden NFL 24, if you have Game Pass Ultimate, Resident Evil 3, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, a little to the left, plate up, and return to grace. Now, there's a little bit of confusion because over on the Xbox Wire, they also included Tales of Arise in this list as well. And that was the game that I was most excited for. It's one of those games that I've been meaning. I'm like, man, I'm going to try that. I need to try that. I need to try that. And a couple of years after its launch, I haven't tried it yet. Now, mysteriously, it's not coming to Game Pass this month. I don't know what that's about. I find it hard to believe that it would have been a typo because I feel like that's pretty deliberate, like to type that out and include it in the blog post. Maybe the deal fell through, maybe it's coming later in February, or in March, April, any other month. I'm not so sure, but I'm also really excited to see that Resident Evil 3 is on here, because I've been playing Resident Evil 2 through Game Pass, and I'm just about done with my second playthrough with Claire. And I'm really tempted, once I'm done with that playthrough, to just jump straight into Resident Evil 3. I already have Resident Evil 4 Remake, so maybe I'll just jump into that too. Other than that, I'm not really excited for the other games on this list, but maybe you are.
And while the internet is going crazy right now, people are renouncing the Xbox brand, whatever that means, Game Pass is still awesome. And rather than get wrapped up in some sort of rumor or internet drama, I highly recommend that you just go find something in the Game Pass library and play it. That's ultimately what this is about, right? So this past Wednesday, I was invited to go see the season two premiere of Halo 2, now airing on Paramount+. Plus. And it was a lot of fun. There was like some really cool photo ops, very cool people to talk to about Halo and Xbox. I went with my wife, so we treated it as kind of like a little date night, had a little dinner before, then we go to a premiere. So big shout out to Xbox for inviting me and for 343 and Paramount Plus for hosting me. It was a wonderful evening. And I, I wanted to give give season two a chance because I know so many people wrote it off and dogpiled on season one. And let me start off by saying that I understand what they're trying to do and undeniably the people involved in this project are super talented and they've contributed a lot to the industry but I think I just have to I, I just have to admit it guys like I don't want to see Master Chief like this, man. I just don't. And that's no offense to Pablo Shriver, who turns in a really awesome performance in this first episode. I just don't want to see Master Chief in the way that they're doing him, man. Like, I just don't. I, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't want to. Warning, what lies ahead is spoilers for season two, episode one of the Halo show. So if you care about that, just skip ahead. Season one of episode two starts off a lot like the first episode of season one. Specifically, it kicks off with a freaking awesome battle scene. First, Master Chief, he's chilling with the squad and they're complaining because they're like, this mission that we're assigned to is boring. We're basically babysitting. And Master Chief is like, yo, 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 chill. You just got to chill on that, man. We got to do our job. And the whole time, Master Chief is in communication with this Marine squad that's like somewhere over, somewhere a little bit far away, I guess. I don't know. And then he loses contact with them. And he's like, oh, crap, I got to go look for them. I got to save them. And they're like, no, Master Chief, you can't do that. The Covenant's going to glass this planet any minute now. And he's like, I don't care. I'm Master Chief. And if I can help someone, if I could save someone, I'm doing it. And then he starts booking it. Boom, 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 boom. And what's cool in this show, it's kind of like what you see in the games, is because he's a Spartan, because he's He's a freaking super soldier. When he's running, he's like freaking Tyreek Hill booking it. Like he's easily doing like 40, 45 miles an hour. It's awesome. He finds a Marine squad. They have a little bit of banter, classic Halo banter. They're like, we're team Bravo. He's like, I know, I could tell from your aim. And then the Marine squad starts getting picked off. Boom, boom, boom. And they're like, gosh, what's happening? They're just getting pulled into the dust, into the mist. Until finally, it's just Master Chief and this new character, Corporal Perez. And Master Chief is like, stay behind me. I got this. And then proceeds to fight tooth and nail for this soldier that he just met classic master chief just absolutely freaking cooking these elite covenant dudes and by the way the cgi on these elites and the covenant that we see in season one as well is awesome and all the elites are equipped with an energy sword and they look awesome too the like the juxtaposition of them glowing in this like dark kind of dusty area they nailed it they nailed it Compare that to the end scene that Master Chief is in where he's wearing this hoodie and he goes to this nightclub that has this private room where a little virtual girl pops up and she's like, hey, sugar, I could be anything you want. And so he turns her into Cortana. And then he's crying in the virtual strip club with this Cortana that's not really Cortana. And I'm like, oh, hell no, man. Like, they got our boy crying in the virtual strip club. That is not what I want to see as a Halo fan, man. And, like, I get it. They're trying to add a human element. And I'm not saying that dudes, soldiers, they got to be badass all the time. They got to be tough all the time. Master Chief is the embodiment of everything good about humanity. His relentless drive, the way that he keeps fighting, he never gives up, even in the face of insurmountable odds. His dependability, he's going to show up and fight for you no matter what. Whenever you need him, he is going to show up. He's not going to be crying in the strip club, bro. I'm sorry. I just don't want to see that. Master Chief, 
He's a good soldier, but even if you give Master Chief an order, if he wants to do something else, he's doing it. No one's gonna stop him. And in the first episode of season two, he's just constantly getting bitched around by these other dudes like in corporate suits. They're like, sit down, Master Chief, and shut up and listen to me. And he's just like, mm, yes, sir. I'm like, come on, man, come on. That, again, it's just not what I wanna see. I'm not saying that it's not interesting. I'm not saying that like, you know, there are gonna be people out there that enjoy it. It's just me personally, as a Halo fan, that is not what I want to see. It's weird because they had a Q&A afterwards and the producer was like, yeah, I really wanted this to be more like the classic war epics, like Saving Private Ryan. Yes, that sounds dope. But in order to have like a classic war epic, you gotta have more war. Like that stuff in the beginning and then how it affects them going forward. Not like Master Chief sitting in a debrief mission, Master Chief like talking in the elevator, Master Chief crying in the club. Like, no, that's not what made Saving Private Ryan good. The story in Saving Private Ryan didn't start with him crying in the club. It started with the war. But as longtime followers of the channel will know, I am a big advocate for playing a game or watching something and forming your own opinion about it. Don't just listen to me and take my word for it. First two episodes of season two are out now and you can watch new episodes every Thursday. Anyways, guys, that's all the Xbox stuff I have to talk about today. If you want to give me a follow on Instagram, I'm at State of Ray for my personal account and I have an Xbox Ready page there as well. And I'm also posting a lot to TikTok if you want to check that out too. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.